Hello and welcome to another episode of Leisure Luke. Right now I'm printing a holster that I designed for a Homia brand smoker. Basically you put little wood chips in the smoker and out pours a flavored smoke that you can put in a beverage or you can use to smoke meats. It's an excellent device, I love it. The problem is it has all these small accessories and these accessories are difficult to store on a little cart where I want to store this device. So I designed using FreeCAD, which is a free online software, a three-dimensional model that would hold all the little accessories as well as display it a little bit in a pretty cool way. I think the modeling went pretty fast. I'm impressed with FreeCAD. Basically, you just create shapes. You can make them any size you want, and then you can add those shapes together or delete one shape from the other. I'll walk you through that process. I'll show you my print settings, uh, and I'll show you how the print is going. It's not done yet. And what's cool isn't that I'm making a holster for some home smoker. That's interesting, but the cool part is that I was able to go from a concept in my head to a three-dimensional model on my computer in less than a day. And then a few minutes later, I was able to start printing this, and in 21 hours and 33 minutes, I'm going to have a fully completed model. I will upload it to Thingiverse, and you can download and print one as well. Let's get started. FreeCAD is the CAD modeling software I used. This is basically just the software you use to make the three-dimensional model of the thing you want to print. And making a holder like this for something in a 3D modeling software is pretty easy because of the way these softwares work. Basically, you can make any shape and then you enter the dimensions that you want. After that, you can create a second shape and delete it from the first shape as if it was an eraser, or you can bond those shapes together. And it's kind of easy to know what size to make everything because all you have to do is measure things in real life and then make the cuts the same size. And as far as like tolerance goes, I used half a millimeter of tolerance around everything. So like these little cutouts, these little jars that hold the wood, I just made them a millimeter bigger around in the modeling software than they were in real life so that I knew when I put them in their holder the hole would be a little bigger than the jar. To round the edges like that you use a tool called fillet and all you do is select the edges and then enter the radius that you want the curvature to be. And then I just added a couple of trays where I had a little dead space on my shape. Making the battery holster was easy. Once I had a little square slot, I just made four little batteries, dragged them in, and deleted them from the model. Boom, battery holder. Then you export an STL file, which is the file that uh, Repetier Host is going to use, and you import it into Repetier Host. I was gonna dive further into my printer settings, but I actually didn't love the way that it printed, so I trust that your settings are probably better than what I ended up doing. My biggest problems were that my supports didn't really break away easily. Maybe I made my supports too robust or something. I also only did a 5% infill. I wish I would've done a little more than that, and I wish I would've made my infill pattern 45 degrees instead of being square with the base of the model. But those are the two things that I learned and that I'll do differently next time. I just love this software. After you make the print plan, you can go and look at every single line of plastic that's going to be in your print and it's so cool. But enough about that. I don't have a lot to report on the printing itself. Uh, it went really well. I didn't have to do anything while it was printing. The print took something like 26 hours and the printer had no problems at all. Once again, this Artillery Sidewinder X1 impressed me. I mean, for it to work for 26 and a half hours, that's pretty cool. And I know this looks really messy. Uh, I was actually worried that something had gone wrong but the way it built the supports really squiggly and because the print settings allowed it to print faster on the inside than on the shell of the print uh, and it was a little stringy, it just looks messy. But it had a plan and the plan worked. Can't complain about that. I think this turned out great. Like I said, it didn't print perfectly and it did take me a while to break away the little supports. 
but I am extremely happy with how it turned out. I will do a couple of tweaks before I throw it up on Thingiverse in case anybody else actually prints one of these. And I hope you feel a little more likely to attempt a project like this yourself because it didn't take me that long. I'm not great at CAD modeling and I think the result is, is really fun. Time for the real test. Nice, actually, yeah. I think that looks great there. Oh, I just love it. That turned out even better than I could have imagined. Thank you so much for watching these videos. If you liked it, click like. Otherwise, feel free to watch more of my videos here, subscribe over there, or join me next time. We're gonna do 3D printing robotics parts, a little Arduino work, a little bit of MATLAB, should be fun. We'll see you there.